Hi everyone, we'll just wait for a few more minutes um, until everyone joins. Um, and uh, and if everyone can please just mute themselves for now. That'd be much appreciated. Um, we'll wait and see if anyone else will join us. Um, so for now, if you can, please turn your camera on and microphone off. Okay, um, just a few more minutes. Um, if you can please turn your camera on, that'd be great. And also, we're going to start by taking up our homework from last time, which is this. Uh, so if you can please pull it up, if you've done it, or just on um, if you haven't. And also the signal, right, um, my signal is not very good today. So if at any time you guys can't hear me, please let me know, okay? And if you guys have questions in class, you can just turn your mic on to let me know or raise your hand using the raise hand button. Okay, let's get started then. So, well, um, let's for oh again a little self introduction. My name is Angel. Um, you can just call me Angel. Um, and let's get started. So last time we looked at um, well, let's do a little review first. So last time we looked at angles and triangles. So um, there's a little summary of the back right here. It's a little lagging right now. We'll see. Okay, so this right here is basically everything that we went through last week. 
uh, we looked at different angles. We looked at different angles and we looked at um, well, different types of triangles. So first of all, how do we identify angles? Does anyone know? You can just open your mic up. So first of all, can someone tell me what an acute angle is? Why won't my marking show? Does anyone know what an acute angle is? What makes an angle acute? Oh, Archer knows. You can just turn your mic on. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's supposed to be one angle is like the angles are small. Like things, if it's if it's a big angle, then it's right. If it's a medium one, it's a, a tube. And if it's if it's um a acute, and then it's small. Very nice. Um. But very close though. So you were right about acute angles. So first of all, last time we looked at a perfect um oh it showed it. So we looked at a perfect L. Um so if we have a small so this is called an angle right here. So if there's a smaller angle, smaller than this perfect L, then we call it acute. If it's larger than this perfect L, we call it obtuse. And if it's a perfect L, then we would call it a right angle. So this right here is an acute angle. All three are acute angles. This angle right here is right, and this angle right here is obtuse. Archer was very close. Okay, now let's look at the three types of triangles. So we have equilateral triangle, an isosceles triangle, and a scalene triangle. Can someone tell me um, the difference between the three? Huh? Okay, let's go through this then. So equilateral triangle, we see that there's an equal. It looks like an equal here, okay? So it means that it has three equal sides. So it has, so these three sides have the same side length, meaning their side length are equal, making, it, making this triangle an equilateral triangle. And if we have two of the same side length, then it's called an isosceles triangle. And if none of the three sides have the same side length, then it would be a scalene triangle. Okay, so here's a little review of what we did last time. Now let's look at our homework from last time. Did anyone do the homework from last time? We did? You are sure did. Oh, Dylan did. And Sichuan also. Nice. Everyone did their homework. Okay. So does anyone have any questions regarding the homework from last time? If you have any questions, you can just open your mic and let me know. Or are there any specific questions that you would like me to go through? No. We're all good? Nice. Okay, then I don't think we have to take up any homework here. If you guys have any questions, um, feel free to ask. Um, or if you have any questions that you want me to take up, um, we can go through everything um, as well. Or you can send me a message in the group chat, and then I can just um, try to help you. So if we don't have any other questions, let's move on to... Today's class then. Today we are going to look at, let's go to the table of contents. 
So today we're going to look at quadrilaterals. Um, and before that, um, your homework was also to preview um, quadrilaterals. Did anyone preview that? It's okay if you haven't, because we're just gonna take a look at it today. Okay, so let's get started then. Do I have a volunteer to read this for me? Do Dylan want to read for us? No? No volunteers? Okay, I will read then. I did it. What did you do now? I drew the perfect rectangle. It's very nice. But what makes it perfect? Hmm. What makes this rectangle perfect? We will see. Like all rectangles, its sides all meet at the perfect angle. Those are rectangles. Actually, this one is on the left. So let's have a question mark here. On the left, so is it still a right angle? If it's on the left, is it still a right angle? Yes, it's still a right angle. Right angle is just the name of that angle. It does not depend on where it is. It's always a right angle if it's a perfect L. So if it's a perfect L, then it's always a right angle. If anyone have any questions, you can just turn your mic on and let me know. So right here, we can say, no, it's not. It wouldn't be the left angle. Let's keep going then. Yes, but all four angles in a rectangle are called right angles. Even the ones on the left, right. I mean, there are right angles on the right and right angles on the left. That is correct. Is that right? It is correct, we know that. Any angle that makes a perfect L is called a right angle, no matter where it is. That's just wrong. It's not. It's right. So if anyone want to take notes, this right here is a perfect place to take notes. You can you can jot this down if you guys want to. Uh, let me highlight it. So this, you can jot this down, or you can jot this down later. Are we all finished? Okay, then let's move on. If anyone wants to read, you can just let me know, but if not, then I will just read for you. Tell me more about this perfect rectangle. All four of its sides are exactly the same. Your perfect rectangle is called a square. I guess that's true, but it's not a perfect rectangle. It's just a regular old rectangle square. Actually, it is a square. It is a rectangle. But you just said it was a square. Mm. Does anyone know like what makes a square square? Am I lagging? Mm. Maybe. Can anyone hear me? Because I can't really see you guys right now. Yeah. Okay, now I can, so you guys can hear me, right? 
Okay, I'll keep going. I'll just turn my camera off for now because I think my... Recording in. Can anyone hear me through this? If you can, please um, tell me, turn your mic on to tell me. Because I can't really hear you guys right now. Or you can just type in the chat saying you can hear me. Can everyone hear me now? Mm. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, just had a little internet issue. Um, can you still see my iPad screen? Recording in progress. Recording. Progress. Recording. Progress. Let me try sharing my screen. Let me try sharing my screen. Okay, um, I'll just share the screen. Can you guys see my screen now? You can, you can just nod or give me a thumbs up. Okay, thank you for that. Um, let's wait until it goes. So sorry for this. I'll try to fix my watch line for the next week or for the rest of today's class, of course. There we go. I think I can make my got my iPad working. Okay. Sorry about that. It's still a little small, but at least it's moving. Okay, so let's keep going. Sorry about that. Actually, it is a rectangle. Hmm. So what we're talking about is in the model, what's the square square? Can we, so, no? You can just turn your camera on, or sorry, 
turn your mic on to tell me, or we can just have a look at it together. Yeah. Actually, it is a rectangle, but you just said it was a square. It is. A square is a special kind of rectangle. A square is a rectangle that has four equal sides. So if you guys want, this is also a great place to take notes. All of the highlighted ones are a great place to take for your note-taking. Okay. okay. Is so right here it says all squares are rectangles. And that is correct. All squares are rectangles. Um, did anyone turn their mic on? Oh, sorry. Okay, and that is true. All squares are rectangles. The same way that all pigeons are birds and all birds are animals. All squares are rectangles. So are all rectangles squares? Is that right? We can just nod or shake our head. Do we agree? No, I wouldn't agree either. Not all rectangles are squares, but all squares are rectangles. Right here, it says, nope, but some are. It's like only some animals are birds and only some birds are pigeons. Most rectangles don't have four sides that are the same. But the ones that do are called squares, and that is true. Okay, let's keep going. All of the shapes I drew have four sides. Does that make them all rectangles? Does that make them all rectangles? Does anyone know? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. No, that's right. Not all, not all shapes with four sides are rectangles. So it's right here, actually, no. But there's a little exercise here. How many are rectangles? Can, can someone tell me how many of these shapes right here are rectangles? You can just um, hold your hand up or tell me. How many of these are rectangles? Five? Dylan says five. Do we agree? Yeah, we agree with him. Okay, let's count together. So this one is a rectangle, this one is a rectangle, this one is a rectangle, and this one is a rectangle. And the last one, this one is a rectangle. So yes, we do have five rectangles. What makes them rectangles? Why isn't this shape here a rectangle? And why isn't this shape here a rectangle? We'll take a look. So right here, what do you learn? For a shape to be a rectangle, it needs to have four sides and four right angles. Right angles? The angles that make a perfect up. Well, right. So this the highlighted ones are for you for um, notes, if you guys want to take notes or or um, 
take notes later. You guys can do that. Okay. And do I have any questions? We all understand? No more questions? Nice, I see Dylan nodding. Thank you. Okay, so these five are all rectangles. What do we call the others? So what we call these ones? Let's see, they're all quadrilaterals. So a quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon. Poly what? Polygons are closed shapes with straight sides like triangles, pentagons, hexagons, hexagons. Polygons with four sides are called quadrilaterals. So all of these triangles, pentagons, hexagons, and octagons are polygons. So we know that triangle is like this. Um, here I see. Triangle is like this with three sides. And pentagon has five sides. Hexagon has and octagon has so the polygon with four sides are called quadrilaterals. Okay, do we have any questions? Thank you for the feedback. Okay. So some shapes are polygons, right? The closed ones with the straight sides. And some polygons are quadrilaterals. The ones with four sides. And some of those quadrilaterals are rectangles, only if they have four right angles. And some of those rectangles are squares. Right. The ones with four equal sides are squares. Let me zoom out a bit so that we can see the entire thing. So right here, we can see that the very big circle includes all shapes. We have all kinds of shapes, right? We see a circle, we see a heart, we see the moon shape. We see all kinds of shapes. And inside the shape circle, we have the polygon circle. Inside the polygon circle, we have we can see we have oh, also for the shapes, everything's included. For example, triangles, this um, parallelogram, rectangle squares are all included in shapes. And for polygons, we see triangle, we see pentagon, and we also have all of the quadrilateral rectangles and squares inside the polygon circle. And inside the polygon circle, we also see the quadrilaterals circle. And there we have all of the um, all of the polygons with four sides. If we count every um, every single shape inside the quadrilateral circle, we can see that it all has four sides. Right, everything included. And if we look at rectangles. Circle, you will see that all of the shapes inside the rectangle circle have four sides and four right angles. And same here. And lastly, we have the square circle. Inside the square circle, we see that, of course, first of all, it's a rectangle. It has four sides and four right angles. But also, in addition, we have four equal sides. 
the four, the side lengths of the four sides are the same. That's why it's called a square. And that's what makes this shape a square. Okay, do we have any question regarding this diagram? No? Good, I see lots of feedback. Okay, let's keep going then. And zoom in a bit. I get it. All squares are rectangles. All rectangles are quadrilaterals. All quadrilaterals are polygons, and all polygons are shapes. And that is right. So if you guys want to, you guys can also take notes on this. But note taking on is not necessary. You can take notes if you want to. You can also choose not to. And also, if we look at the gray box on the bottom, it says that the diagram on this page is called a Venn diagram. Each labeled ring represents a category. Items inside each ring belongs in that category. And the items outside each ring are not part of that category. So if we come back to this diagram, we'll see that inside each ring belongs in that category. And the items outside each ring are not part of that category. So we can see that the squares inside the rectangles, we have the squares, which is part of rectangles. But outside of quadral, outside of rectangles, we see this parallelogram, this rect, sorry, this um, triangle and this circle. They're not part of the rectangles. They don't belong to that category. So that is what makes this a Venn diagram. Everything inside the circle belongs in that category. Anything outside of that circle does not belong in that category anymore. Okay, any questions? No questions? We're good? Okay, let's keep going then. Right here, it says that every square is also a rhombus. A what? A rhombus. A rhombus is an equilateral quadrilateral. Any quadrilateral that has four equal sides is called a rhombus. Any quadrilateral that has four equal sides is called a rhombus. Four equal sides. Remember what makes a square? We need four equal sides and what else? There's one more thing that is that a shape or a quadrilateral has to satisfy in order for it to be a square. We have four equal sides. What else? Right, I see the Kelly's showing us with her hands. Right. We need four right angles. So four right angles and four equal sides makes a square. But if we just have four equal sides, then we have a rhombus. But if we just have four right angles, what do we have? You can just turn your mic on to tell me. If we just have four, four right angles, but no 
but not four equal sites. What do we have? So you can also tell us. A rectangle. Nice, very good. We do have a rectangle. So four equal sides gives us a rhombus. Four right angles gives us a rec rectangle. And if we have both, then we have a sphere. This thing asks right here, like a square? Right. But a rhombus doesn't always. A rhombus doesn't always have four right angles. So if we look right here, there's one that is a rhombus, has four equal sides, but it's not a square because it does not have four right angles. Okay, so are we clear on the three, the rhombus, square, and rectangles? Do we have any questions? No, we know the difference between this three and the similarities. I see lots of feedback. Thank you guys. What about this diamond shaped one over here? That's a rhombus. All right. Because if we look right here, there's four equal sides. If you guys have this, um, if you guys have a ruler beside you or anything, you guys can measure it. The sides are actually equal. So it's a rhombus. Let's move on to this diagram right here. Can anyone tell me what diagram is this? Can anyone tell me the name of that diagram? We just talked about this. Remember the little gray box? A Venn diagram. Thank you, Dylan. It is a Venn diagram. So as we talked about, so we have the three right here. We have squares, rectangles, rhombuses. So it, this is the, these are the three that we just talked about. And here is a very big category, quadrilaterals. So we see that all rectangles um, or right angles. We see that all rhombuses have four equal side lengths. And we see that square has both. And also the little um, L thing that I drew on each right angle, that's just the symbol of a right angle. If it's just a regular angle, it would look like this. It's what I felt. And also the little dashes that I drew on the sides, that's another symbol um, representing that the side lengths are equal. Okay. So that's um, a regular math symbol that we would use. So let's keep going then. So for we know that all rectangles um, have four right angles, which squares have as well. Four right angles. Rhombuses has four equal side lengths, which square has as well. So that makes the square a rectangle and a rhombus. So squares belongs in the rectangles category and the rhombus category. When one category belongs to another category, we would draw this um, connected circle right here. So we see that square belongs in that circle and also this circle.
and everything all three categories belongs in the quadrilateral circle. Because they're all shapes with four straight sides. Okay, let's keep going. A rhombus that has four right angles is a square. You can take notes on this as well. You don't have to again, but you can if you want to. So if a rhombus is also a rectangle, then it is a square. Is that right? Mm, a little thinking. Yes, that's right. If a rhombus is also a rectangle, so if we move we scroll, on, we can see that a rhombus has four equal space, okay? and a rectangle has four right angles. If we combine the two, that gives us Okay. Let's keep going. Right. And a rectangle that is also a rhombus is a square. That's also correct. Because, well, we see that, uh, again, a rectangle has four right angles. A rhombus has four equal sides. And if we combine the two together, then that gives us this. And one more question on the side. One more question. How can you never see baby pigeon? These are babies. Very funny. Okay, so this is a little summary here. So polygons. Polygons are closed shapes with straight lines. So straight sides. So the sides have to be straight in order for this to be a polygon. So we can see right here, the first shape, it's not a polygon. Why? Well, it tells us because it's not closed right here. Let's do this. But if we connect this, If we close this, then will it be a polygon? Yeah. Right, it will be a polygon. Hey, okay, right here. So let's look at the second one, the star. Is it a polygon? No, it's not a polygon because the sides crosses. So we see that the B sides cross each other. So that is not a polygon, right? If we have something like this, uh, pretend the lines are straight, please. Then it would be a polygon. Just pretend the lines are straight. But sorry, sorry, that's a very bad piece. Okay. So now let's look at the third one. Is that a polygon? No, because not all sides are straight. But if we make this side right here straight, then it would be a polygon. Because first of all, it's closed. Second of all, no sides cross. And first of all, all sides are straight. Okay, let's look at this. So triangles are polygons with three sides. So it's also a little review from last time. Equilateral, we have three equal sides. Remember what the little dashes are for? The little dashes means that all sides with the dashes are equal. And isosceles triangle, at least two sides are equal. So what does that mean? Two sides are equal. So if we draw a Venn diagram, so if we draw a Venn diagram, a very big circle on the side, 
And let's name it isosceles. And then let's draw a little small circle on the other side and name it equilateral. So will these two circles cross? Or will this little circle belong in the bigger circle? Completely inside that circle. Right. I see Sutin giving me a thumbs up. Equilateral will be completely inside isosceles because it says at least two sides are equal. And we have three sides are equal, which is bigger than two. So all equilateral triangles are isosceles triangle. I'll write this on the side. And you guys can take this note if you want. Okay, and lastly, we have the saline triangle. No sides are equal. So if we have a triangle, but none of the sides are equal, then we have a scalene triangle. Now let's look at the different types of angles within each triangle. So right here we have the acute, which is smaller than the perfect. All of the sides on an equal in an equilateral triangle are acute. And right here for the isosceles triangle, we see that there's there are two acute angles. And this, the other angle, right here, in this case, it's a right angle. But it's not always a right angle. It doesn't have to be a right angle. Just in this case, it is. It doesn't always have to. We can have isosceles triangle that does not have a right angle in it. And now let's look at the scalene triangle. Inside the scalene triangle, we also have two acute angles and one obtuse angle. So we have one angle that is larger than perfect L. We have two smaller than a perfect L and one larger than perfect L, okay? So when we learn about degrees, we will know, we will know why we would always have at least two acute angles in each triangle, but it's um, not for this class, but you guys will learn about that. And now let's look at quadrilaterals. So quadrilaterals has four sides. So let's look at the family of quadrilaterals. Rectangles, first of all, is a rectangle. Rectangle has four right angles. Square is a rectangle and a rectangle. From this has four equal states. So that tells us our square has four right angles and it has four equal sides. That's what makes the square square. Okay. So 
this is just a little well, note on the side. It tells you the name of polygons with more than four sides. So pentagon, penta means five. So it's a polygon with five sides. A diagon diagonal connects two corners that are not on the same sides. So it's diagonal. It's basically what it is. The name. And hexagon. Hexa means so it's a polygon with six sides. Hexagon. Cha means seven. So it's the polygon with seven sides. The name basically speaks for itself. Um, but you kind of have to remember the prefix. And octagon has size. I personally think octagon is the easiest one to remember because octagon means eight. If we know, if we, well, I think we've all heard of octopus. Octopus has eight legs. That's why it's called an octopus because it's octopus legs. And then a nonagon, nine sides, decagon, eight sides. Basically, it's just all of the prefixes telling us how many sides we have. Okay. And I see we have a couple more minutes. So let's move on to the second, or the second unit. But um, we have actually, it's a little game, a little lab that I think I may skip. If you guys are interested, you guys can take a look at it on your own. But for now, um, let's look at the second chapter. which is skip counting. Mm, I will share my little screen. Can we all see my laptop screen? Yeah, I see my audio. Let's take a look at skip counting right here. If anyone wants to read, they can just open their mic up and read. If not, then I will be reading. Okay. Cool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, so on. Hmm, I'm not finished. And keeps reading. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. What are we trying to do besides I'm doing? I'm counting to 100. There are faster ways, you know. What? There are faster ways to count to 100? Let's see. 36, 37. So, right here, they this little, I don't know, maybe dragon thing. Oh, is um the other person. That's how you would count to a hundred in a faster way. So this dragon thing was counting by fives. So five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five. That's five each day. We counted to a hundred. But you like what I did there? You skipped most of the numbers, and that's a very important point. You skipped most of the numbers. This chapter is called counting, and that's what that social introduction. Of course, it's called counting. I was counting by fives. You skipped some of the best numbers, which means you skipped forty-two. So this person thinks that 42 is one of the best numbers. But if we counted by five, then we would skip 42. So can we find other ways to count to 100? Of course. That's right here that I only skipped 42 
because I was counting by fives. You can skip count by any number. As long as you add the same amount every time. So that's very important. You have to add the same amount every time. So if we move up, we can see that when this person was skip counting by fives, you added five each time. So it's the same amount every time. He did not skip. Or he did not add two this time and three next time. He added five. So a key note to skip counting is that you have to add the same amount every time. Okay. Okay, let's keep going. And also, I will highlight this. Um, if you can, I don't Okay, so if you want to take notes, then it's at the same amount every time. Okay. Okay, and you wouldn't skip 42 if you were counting by twos or threes or even sixes or sevens. Try it, skip count. Well, maybe we won't try this because we ran out of time. But you guys can try this on your own. It's actually pretty fun. I must admit that it was quicker. But when would you ever need to skip count? That's a very good question. When would we? We'll see. Suppose you wanted to count all the petals on the flowers in the vase. That's a lot of petals. Sure but you can skip count. And for example, we see, um, let's see, each flower has 10 pets, so I can skip count by 10. And that's very, very good, right? Because we can see that 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, which is much faster than counting one by one. So when you skip count by tens, every number ends in zero. We find that trend. Every number ends in zero. So we are just adding star each time. This is fun. Give me something else to count. How many socks are there in this drawer? They come in pairs. So what does come in pairs mean? Pairs means two, right? So we can skip count by twos. So two, four, six, H, 10. And keep in mind, we add the same amount each time. So we want two each time. And we always add the same amount each time. Right? You see that we add two here, add it two here. And then we got to two. Let's skip some of it. Okay. So, and then, well, we're not finished. But why do we have so many socks? We're not sure. There's ten. When you skip count by twos, you just skip every other number. So we skipped all of the odd numbers, right? If we look up, we see that there's no odd numbers. We have even numbers only. So we skip and odd numbers and even numbers always come together. So it's one odd, one even, one odd, one even. And if we skip every other number, then we would skip all odd numbers. How about this? A monster with four hands and five fingers on each hand. So let's try to count this. 
seven hands, five fingers. Five fingers. So it means we are adding by the same amount every time. So how many fingers does the monster have all together? If we ask us, we can use step counting, right? Okay, then let's write it down. We have seven hands, so we would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's how we would get the total answer. But if we want to use skip counting, we will just count one by one. So first we have five, and then 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And that is the seventh hand. So if we count by sevens, I'm sorry, count by fives, then it would give us 35 fingers altogether. Okay. Okay, so let's see what they did. I need to add seven fives, which is what we did. I can just skip count five fives, and that's what they did as well. So we got the same answer, which is 35 fingers. And let's look at the dragon person. When you skip count by fives, every number ends in a five or a zero. I don't even need to see all of the items I'm counting. Right. As long as they are in groups of two or five or 10 or well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. How would you skip count by groups? How would we skip count by twelves? Right, I see. I see Su Chen trying to tell me through them. You can, uh, you don't have to turn on your mic count. So we can just add each time. And right here, we're talking about dozens of eggs. Dozen means 12, which is exactly what we wanted to know. So I'll definitely count the total number of eggs in all these cartons. Go for it. So we see that there's seven cartons, which means seven dozen, which means seven twelves. So we can just add 12 seven times, or we can see what they did. It's easy to count by tens with only the tens digit increasing. But what does that have to do with skip counting and clock? Well, it's just two more than 10. If we can add 10, it's easy to add two more. So that's what basically what they did. So starting at 12, 12 plus 10 is 22, and two more than that is 24. So what they did is first added which is 12 plus 10, giving us 22. And then what they did is that they added the ones digit, which is four. And then they just repeated this over and over again, seven times. And right here we see that 24 plus 10 gives us 34. And 34 plus 2 gives us 36. Right? Do we have any questions? That's how we added 12. Okay, we can just keep adding 10 and 2 until all the eggs are counted. To count by 12, we can add 10 and 2 because 10 and 2 makes, and that's right, we know that 10 plus 2 equals
Okay, and then look right here. We finished counting. We got 84. And then, well, that's it. So now let's look at our homework for today. So we will only finish do the homework from um, chapter one. And I will show you guys what homework I give you. So do we all have access to the practice work? Yes. So the homework tonight will be pages 15 to 24. All questions from pages 15 to 24. Okay. So starting from this, page 15, all the way to page 24. Okay, it looks like a lot, but it's not. Okay, so if you guys have any questions regarding the, the content today or the homework, you can just let me know. Either right now or stay after class, or um, you can have your parents send me a message in the group chat, and then I will help you guys out, okay? So if you don't have any questions, then you can feel free to lock off, and I will see you guys next week. Bye, Sweet Chen. Bye, Dylan. Have a good day. Do you have any do you have any questions, Archer? No? Okay. See you. Um, do you have any questions? No? Okay.